so I'm going to put this little guy on here and then wipe him back off probably a couple times. And And, and that way I'm also getting a little bit of color on my canvas. So I don't have that uh, white canvas that um, can be a little intimidating sometimes. Um. So I like this, the idea of this guy being um, kind of off center. I don't worry too much about the drawing at this point. I'm just trying to get the major shapes like what's the major concept here um and, and then there's this the thing that drew me to this photo so the photos that i tend to share are photos that i have taken and i really want to paint from them at some point um and they're not necessarily great photos. Like with this photo, that white is just completely blown out. Um, and um, and sometimes when a photo just is really great by itself, I feel like what's the point of painting it? It's already uh, done. <laughs> and so I, I actually really prefer working from photos that um, just need some creative energy to make them make sense, make them interesting. I'm just sort of noticing the form as I go along and I'll probably be correcting the drawing um, most of the time that I'm working on the painting and um, that doesn't bother me because I'm confident that I will get it eventually and so uh, if my proportions are way off or something um i'm not worried about that i think it just adds some texture to the painting um and so i'm kind of erasing down and trying to assess as i go along like how big is the head compared to the body um it's um one of the things i really like about birds is um i think they have these powerfully simple shapes um i really love that and so i'm tempted to bring the body down to kind of fix the drawing but i know part of what i really liked is that it's pushed way up um, and that seems kind of dynamic. And, all right, let's see.
And if you have any questions about like, what's the purpose of an underpainting or anything else, um, you are invited to speak up. Mom, what type of painting are you using? Yeah, so this is oil paint. Um, and um, and I've thinned it down with odorless mineral spirits. Um, and um, you don't have to thin it down, but it does make the process just go so much faster. Um, and I just do that at the very beginning. Um, and and then I'm just using a, a rag to kind of wipe it back off. So it's more like staining the canvas where it's light. Um, and yeah, and I have um, titanium white on my palette, um, which is my go-to white. It's, um, measuring here um it's it's the more opaque of the whites um in this medium and um cadmium yellow deep which just really seems like it would make a nice beak color here and it's kind of my go-to uh yellow also um and yellow ochre cadmium red um which i don't use a ton of but when i want it it's really helpful um and and then my um magenta is um uh, rose matter hue i really like that color and um ultramarine blue and oh, cerulean blue um and okay. yeah thanks for asking and i'm probably going to do a little check in just a minute, stand across the room and make sure I feel good about the composition and the drawing and um, And so I'm all done with the um, mineral spirits. It just, it helps to kind of spread it out pretty quickly, but I'm gonna get it off of my palette in a second here. Um, and I know I'm gonna want different colors right there. I, I really like to have some color poking through. Um, from the underpainting, um, but I I don't really want it to accidentally mix in. Um, you know, it's fine when that's on purpose, but <laughs> when it's not, it's annoying uh, to work with. So, um, and you can work over thick paint at the beginning and just um, you know get new paint to sit on top. But I also like to have kind of thinner paint and um, not have to think about it so much. Um, is trying to put, yeah, trying to put paint right on top of other paint, it takes a little bit, uh, well, it takes a lot of brain power, I think. So, um, let's see. And let's see, so I'm just looking at where my darks are and if that is working. Um, really put a detail in here normally right at the beginning, but it's kind of an important thing. This little, little speck of dark color right in the middle of everything else. 
and the shadow that goes across here. Kind of important for the form. So I'm gonna leave that there. And okay. And so I still am not done with my drawing. Um I'm open to the idea that everything could move. So it's a it's a really looking down kind of an angle. Oh, that got really yellowish. Yeah. And I, I tend to try to stick with um, as limited a palette as will get the results I want. And so, um, you know, if I can do it with three colors, I will, I will do that. Um, and if it takes seven colors, then that's what I'll do. But the longer I look at a source material, the more I can see subtlety in it. Um, and so, um, I think it's nice to take advantage of that and get big general colors and big general shapes at the beginning and then get more and more specific. The longer I've been looking at it and the more specific things I can actually see. Um, And that's nice because it works in the order that you really, I know it's the order that you really want to get the information down anyways. So, so that seems like a pretty happy, happy way for the brain to work. And so, let's see. Let me get these grayer colors in here and also kind of define this form a little bit better. And then I can get some of the watercolor in relationship to that, um, to the gray of the bird that are possible to get the right. results I want. And so um, let me just see if if I can get all the way through the painting with these. If I yeah, I've heard I've heard uh, I've been watching a lot of artists who are going to very limited palettes. Yeah, and uh, it's very it's very interesting the range you can actually achieve with just a few few colors. Yeah, you know the human yeah. brain is just amazing. Like you'll just fill in all the stuff you don't see. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't have to worry about color harmony if you use if you use in three colors, everything oh, yeah. has three colors in it. Um, yeah. You just cross that right off the list. Um, but with that said, I know there are artists that use like twenty colors on their palette and they get great color harmony. Um, I re I recently did a a little a course with an artist online, and there had to be almost fifteen colors and I thought well, that's way way too much although the paintings ended up very brilliant and bright but still um, yeah. a lot of colors to work with wow 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 yeah that's that's interesting so how did you remember like like if I come back to this painting next week and say oh you know I want to do a little something over here I'll know exactly which colors went into it because there's so uh -huh. few to choose from. Yeah. Did you? That's a very good point. 
how, how do you navigate that when you've got 15? Or did, it's, def it's difficult, I can tell you from experience. It's, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, and you uh, end up using a lot of extra, well, I don't want to say wasting, but using a lot of extra paint to try to get back to that color. Sure. Especially if you're not an expert uh, color blender, uh, which I am not. <laughs> so. Right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's one of the things I like about a really limited palette. Um, There's this beautiful kind of grayish, bluish uh, reflection across some of the water here. Just gonna drag some paint and um, so this is you kind know, of scumbling where you're just dragging it across and letting it the um, under layer show through. So this is my sky color. Um, I'm just going to keep that in mind. And I know this looks like it should be going on the very top, and I'm uh, <laughs> doing it first. <laughs> and um, yeah, I might come back and and um, touch it up more later. Let's see. I think it's going to need to be a lot darker. I'm just going to get in the starting point here. Of like, and and so I'm going to get a little bit of darker. Oh, and if I muted people that, um, so I periodically will mute, like if I hear a little bit of background noise, but um, please don't take it personally. You are very welcome to unmute yourself if you'd like to um, talk. So. Get a little bit closer to that form. So I'm putting my medium away and I'm just going to be using um, paint, like just without medium for a while here. And so this. Uh, this shape right here, it feels like if I paint what I see here, which is the back, but it's really pretty bright right here. And then it's surrounded by the shadow on the neck on the left and the shadow around the body on the right. And um, it's like kind of a little spotlight right there. So I'm going to try to catch the form without creating that spotlight. And tone down. It's there. And there's this beautiful warmth, this uh, right around the bird in the water. Um, Bring this area. Uh, let's see. Sometimes it's kind of fun to leave it really loose and ambiguous until later on. 
Um, And cool. and if you're willing to just keep working on a painting until it's done, then um, it's never gone wrong. It's just always not quite done yet <laughs> until it is, until, until you like it. And uh, yeah. Okay. So if I come across a, a color that feels like it belongs here or there, I'll I'll jump in and put it there, even if I was planning to mix something else. And hmm. so right here, there's these interesting little reflections, and I'm just going to take a note of it. And those can kind of come back later, and then. This part has moved somewhat. I want to make sure to line up my um, my bird with the reflection. And so that can be really jarring to have have the reflection a little bit off. And reflections are so strange because they just come straight at you no matter where you are and so um everybody has experienced reflections and so even if you consciously wouldn't realize that looking at a painting where the reflection isn't coming straight towards you it, it is jarring um and um and so that's one of those things I'll, I'll double check later on and just make sure it's happening. And then over here, there's this kind of wildness. <clears throat> and So it's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see a bird yet or not. Um, it's uh, sometimes sometimes that doesn't happen have to happen very early on. Um, so let's see. And bring it all the way from this corner. And so I know. I'm looking at a larger photo with more that's around the bird than, um, you know, I didn't crop in the photo before painting from it. Um, and to me, when it, like, if the photo was already cropped, um, if I had really zoomed in on this bird when I took the photo, it would make it so much harder to paint from. Um, because that's part of what's really fun for me is, is the cropping part. Um, 
but also it's nice to be able to pull in information that's further out. Um, if something seems like it really helps. And so I'm going to lighten this up a little bit, but I really like the color um, sort of unmixed. So. Trying to kind of stain the canvas with it. And then, and then I can work over it. Um, if I had already gotten some thick paint on there, I wouldn't have gone for this. But this was just um, just barely stained and not really painted on yet. So this area back here is kind of ambiguous to my eye, and so I'm just going to leave it that way. I love a little bit of ambiguity in a painting. Oh, boy. I don't know if you can hear there's a winter storm starting outside. It has been so funny here in South Dakota. We had 70 degree weather literally two weeks ago. And um, and now it's all snowy and So water, I think, can be um, really as complicated <laughs> or as simple as you want. And let's see. So there's some beautiful warm colors Close to the bird, you can tell the water is not very deep. It's a little darker. So trying to get to the right value in here and then that warm kind of, I don't know, yellowish maybe color under here. I'll um, try to find a little bit later and I don't want to lose this neat shadow. So I'm just trying to be really conscious of that as I go. And I don't have quite the color I want yet. So I'm not getting in here really close to the geek. Um, I uh, 
kind of want this like curved in feeling for the beak and the head. So I want to really kind of get this gesture here. Isn't that fun? The <laughs> white paint over the stained canvas, or I guess very light paint here over a stained canvas. So pretty. Okay, and then when I make a mark that I really like, um, I try to take a second to remember that for future. I don't know if it'll make it into this painting. Um, but I found that the more I can slow down and appreciate it, the more likely it is to show up in a future painting. And so let's see, eyes a lot further up. Yeah, that nice so just trying to refine the drawing a little bit and leave a little bit of the underpainting if I can. And put some little the little paintbrushes I could do tiny details with, but I, I don't want to get sucked in like the earlier I get details, the less likely I am to be willing to change things if it if things need changing. So let's see, there's this pretty shadow right here. And okay, so I'm trying to get this gesture. Okay. We have this, uh, <laughs> this great expressions there. Goes through right at the beginning. Okay. 
So I'm still thinking about this area and what's to be done about, about that to make it kind of make sense. Um, I don't think the form makes much sense without it, since this is the angle, but um, let's see. I do really want it to be very subtle. And just, and that's part of the fun. I think painting, you know, it's all about problem solving. And um, you know, how do you tell the story in a way that feels like it makes sense? And so this is uh, both my blues and white. And um, the water tends to, so like, you know, if you see one thing, you go for that. But if you can't tell, then um, it's nice to have some. <laughs> It tends to kind of information to lean back on, but water tends to uh, kind of neutralize and the value. Um, so kind of light and dark things and dark and light things and um, and cool down reflections a little bit. Um, but of course, if you're seeing something different, that's awesome and get that instead. So my outline was still kind of showing through and um, not, not in a very helpful way. So make this transition a little bit more subtle. And so I'm just kind of mixing right here on the canvas. And Part of it is that this shape is a little confusing to me. Like it feels like I'm not totally understanding the shape of the bird. And um, and so that can kind of come through. I don't think you have to understand what you're looking at to be able to paint it well, but um, you know, trying to paint something clearly when you <laughs> don't understand it, it, that doesn't work out very well for me. Um, you know. And Oh, I'm just trying to lighten up this area right here a little bit. I'm kind of mixing on the canvas. And this is a pretty firm bristle brush. So the harder I push, the more it is an eraser. So just with this kind of subtle highlight, 
And I want to kind of continue around here. And then over here, I'm going to brush off a little bit. And then over here, I'm just going to mix this in, make it a little bit more subtle. And And I'm going to continue this color from that side to this side so that um, it's clear that this these are two sides of the same thing. Let's see. Trying to give these little visual clues so I'm not having to. Um... Okay, so I think it's getting more and more clear to me what exactly is hard for me to see and therefore explain. And So I think it's this blown out area here. Is misleading me about the shape. So I'm just going to try that on for a minute. So I, I'm not necessarily trying to leave something defined really well. I'm trying to make sure I understand what it is. So that if I'm, if I decide to do something really subtle and ambiguous, I still feel like I have some clarity about about what I'm trying to show and explain, and um, and I think that it just helps to um, even if the drawing doesn't end up in the final picture, the fact that I understood it well enough at some, you know, it, it just kind of helps me to paint. Um, and so it seems kind of funny to put in details and then wipe them off or put in a more refined drawing and then wipe it off, but I, I actually do that quite a bit. Um, it's uh yeah it feels like more of like part of the process um okay. and yeah and then there's this So I this beautiful variety in the water here. Um, yeah, that's better. And I don't usually quite have this much paint on my hands. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Okay. And so there's some stuff in here that I really like and i'm just trying to assess it and part of it is this kind of lost and found edge here is making me really happy i don't want to um 
I don't want to wipe it up without thinking about it. I, I want it to be a different color. Um, So let's see, there we go. And so I'm trying to not just like outline the bird, but to use the bird's back being darker as a distinction here. And in this part, move that a little bit more subtle. And so I'm not really trying to put down a brush stroke and leave it. I'm trying to sort of build up to where I want the painting to be. And then when I put on the final brush strokes, they'll be um, they'll be pretty because I've been kind of doing this work here in order to get there. Um, Um, okay, so that just got more clear to me. That's fun. And I, I can't remember which artist it was. I, I just recently read some the words by a uh, painterly painter and I just can't remember who um who was talking about kind of irony of um like when you love making beautiful brush strokes and that's really important a lot of times you're painting very slowly and because of that it makes it look like it was painted um like spontaneously and quickly and it's just kind of it's kind of funny how that works um, yeah. i loved that book because it's exactly how i feel like I, when i'm trying to make beautiful brush marks i just slow way way down to try to get to be decisive and like um, thoughtful about every stroke. Yeah, and um, oh, all right, that's better. And I'm, I'm a big fan of color, so this um, gold here right next to the violets is making me really happy. Um, and finally, there's the solution to how to get this shadow side of the bird to stand out from the shadowy water. And 
I think blending in would have been just fine with me if it didn't feel confusing. I just I was bothered by how the form was being explained right there. And just you know, looking and looking at this source material and trying to see, you know, where do I see this? And trying to slow down enough to um, also ask, you know, is it actually helpful in this spot or that spot? Um, I know I want some in this area. Um, back here but it seems more subtle so i'm gonna start shifting it more away from the cad yellow and just adding in some more of the um, purpley color here and so by making it more subtle i'm hoping it'll go back in space a little bit and also kind of pull less attention. And, and I'm just scumbling or kind of dragging the brush around. Um, so up here, I want more reds in that and that'll kind of pull it forward. So this area of the body disappearing into the background was really bothering me because it felt so confusing. It felt like, I, I guess, just an expression of how I find that shape kind of confusing. Um, whereas the back disappearing into the background doesn't bother me at all. I feel like it makes perfect sense. and. Um, and so I won't mind keeping that a little bit more subtle. Okay, let's see what paintbrush I need. Okay, just paintbrush with a little bit more corner on it. This is a flat and it's got nice Nice points still. Um, I don't think this needs to be a sharp edge, but um, let's drop off that way. Assess it later. And I want that beak to come forward. So I'm going to let the water be darker right there. And I'm just assessing how close I got with the eyeball. Luckily, luckily, that's very <laughs> good. And and then I know I want some similarly dark darks or maybe even darker up here just because that was what I was really enjoying at the beginning of the process was this a really deep dark up here and <laughs> I was very surprised when I started hearing that red, yellow, and blue are not the primaries, which I just think is hilarious since I had been, I'd been mixing with the palette like this. So, you know, it makes sense that I wouldn't ever really 
uh, question it because the real primaries are um, magenta, cyan, and yellow, and those are on my palette right here, so I can mix everything. Um, and since I use the term red very loosely and include magenta in that, it does make sense. I don't, I don't feel too <laughs> bad about it, but. It's really funny. I my mind was completely blown when um, I found out you can basically mix cadmium red from yellow and magenta. And um, no way is that possible. But if you try it, you can do it. It's it's really funny. Um, And, and the same with the ultramarine blue, you can mix something pretty close to that with, um, with a cerulean um, and a magenta. Okay. So I'm letting my paint get a little bit thicker now in certain spots because some. Um, I'm starting to feel more confident about um, that I'm getting closer to the top layer of paint. And, you know, if you get a big, huge pet brush stroke somewhere and, and then later decide that isn't what you wanted there, you know, scrape it off or wash it off or paint over it. But uh, and case in point, I want this shape to be a little different, so kind of overpainted with my background. And so this beak is really long. I'm trying to see, did I exaggerate so much that it's weird or is that kind of close? And I'm looking at this shape some more since I guess in order of importance of things that I really want to make sure are in the painting. This is pretty high up there since I, I really like this shadow a lot and I, I love the colors in it. Um, making sure my reflections kind of making sense and okay. I'm such a big fan of color like a nice dab of a beautiful color just makes me so happy. So I want the rest of the water to be related to this, but not quite as dark. So I'm just going to start here and um, add a teeny bit of white. Um, a lot of times, um, white uh, white is a cool color. It can kind of shift the mix, it does more than just lighten it. Um, and so I'm always conscientious about, um, you know, if I'm trying to take that and lighten it up, just adding white will, will do more than just lighten it. Um, 
So I need to kind of assess it and see if it if I if I like where it went. And I'm just kind of trying to brush this over in certain spots so it so it all feels related and um let's see I'm trying to decide if i like that raw <laughs> it's not raw canvas it's raw um under coat but mm -hmm. let's see like a little bit but might be a little too much right there and So it, even though this feels very brushy, um, I'm still not worried that like if I put down a brush stroke, I'll be stuck with it because you know up until the time you say you're done, um, it really can be changed. Okay, so I've got cadmium red, cadmium yellow. So this is really the most colorful thing I've mixed up. Um, and it's uh, just going to kind of redraw this part. And the color is going to shift a lot along here. I just want to try to find where the line is, and then I'll think about what color it should be uh, later on. The beak is wonky. It's like a pelican beak or something. <laughs> That's really pretty. Okay. Um, all right. That's interesting. I feel like that answers some questions I had about and my line was kind of in an odd spot and so it was um and so it was kind of throwing off all my shapes here so i'm just going to pick up some extra paint and with that And let's see. So you can see these really subtle value changes, but it's so bright, it's very, very subtle. Um, Looks like it's making a lot more sense. Doing this. Cool. Okay. And so I'm going to get back. Oh, let me see. 
What kind of brush is the little one? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> this little one is um, just a super cheap, soft craft brush. It's um, um, it's not fancy. I have some fancy brushes. Most of the brushes I use are actually um, like this one's like six bucks. Uh, it's a wonderful brush. Um, it's a Filbert Grand Prix bristle. Um, but the little ones I get that are just square, um, I guess they're sable brushes, but they're just super cheap crafty brushes that I will get every once in a while, like from um, our only <laughs> store here is Walmart. Um, so like every once in a while, I'll just grab their little bag of, of um, craft brushes. And so that's what this guy is. Um, the other one is um, a Blick Golden uh, Taclon flat. And I love these, these, these are really nice. Um, the, the craft brushes, they don't hold up very well. So when I say every once in a while, I grab a bag of them. It's every year or two, I'll get a little bag of these guys, you know, three or four of them come together and they're super cheap and they, they really work in a pinch, but, um, they, uh, they don't last as, as long. Um, but you know, for situations like this, where I, I don't really want to wash off this other brush and it's nice having a little teeny one, um, they, they work and, um, they just require a little bit more TLC. I think um, I do really low maintenance care for my brushes. Um, I, um, I tend to wipe them off. I keep like old rags and stuff so I can wipe them off or like uh, recycling or something. I'll just, I'll wipe them really good. Every, every once in a while I'll wash them in the mineral spirits, um, by which I just mean I'll kind of scrub them in there for a second and then wipe them on um, some old recycling or something. And, um, and then if they get to, um, like crusty, if they get too hard, um, then I'll wash them in Murphy's oil soap. Um, so I don't use the, the fancy brush soaps. Um, and when you wash them in the Murphy's oil soap, um, it works for most brushes. I feel like I had one brush once that did not like that. Um, but most of my brushes have been very, very happy. And I just soak them for a day or two and then I rinse them out. Um, it keeps them pretty soft. Um, and so I like to have a little area where <laughs> some detail. And this beak, this beak is that area. Um, I think it's easier to do one thing at a time. So like working on this line, I wanted to get it where it was. And then I'm worried about the getting it the color I want afterwards. I don't mind working on top of other paint. Um, I think it's it's cool where it kind of shows through. You can get a little bit of history of the painting right there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just tone down the shadow color just a smidge. Go back and forth. 
feel like I get it. So I'm kind of mixing on the canvas here. Uh, cool. So it's almost kind of lemony. Um, so I'm using CAD yellow and white. Um, I'm going to get it as close as it can. And then um, the whole painting's kind of a kind of cool. Let's see. I'm going to start with this. And if it doesn't seem right. I might add a little blue in here. Can I push it more towards a lemony color? I have high hopes though. Yeah, that's glowing. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's an, uh, this beak is really wild. I'm not sure I've ever really. No, I know I've painted girls before. I'm not sure I've noticed this kind of beak on one before. Okay, so I might put a little blue in there just to tone it down. I feel like it's kind of screaming here, the, the color. Um, and Wipe that out a little bit. There we go. Just kind of softening that and Okay, that shape definitely needs to be defined a little bit more on the bottom, especially. Okay, and this will help me figure out about all the color, I think. And we'll stick here. And okay, that's some thick paint. And <laughs> uh, okay, it's gonna make me happy. Okay. There we go. And I'm just kind of sneaking up to it. Okay. And okay, I feel pretty good about that color. Okay. 
I've been really enjoying learning about um, so this is an all prima painting. It'll be painted all in one sitting. Um, so basically the whole thing is one layer of paint. Um, it's not drying in between. And that's how I usually really like to paint. But recently I've been enjoying the things that you can do when you do let it dry in between. And I know I want some of this under painting to show through, but I'm sort of deciding how much and where. I might make this speak more uh, blended in a little bit. Let me shake this a little bit. I love using <laughs> super thick paint. It's um So funny, it took me a while to really embrace that for some reason. Um, Okay, and then I really love this color that's coming underneath. Let's see if I can accentuate that a little bit. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. This is Terry. Hi, Terry. Hey, Pat asked a question on the chat, but I, I'm oh. just too eager to hear the answer. So I'm going to ask it out loud. How Thank do you, you know when you're finished? <laughs> that is such a good question. I think, yeah, Thanks. I think it's one of the best questions ever. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so funny. Like, um, I it's kind of an intuitive thing so often i have this experience where i'm going along and i'm like oh i'm so far from being done and then one mark will go on it's like oh yep 
and I was done. And it's just like there's it's it's like the painting it starts off like I I'm very open to a painting changing direction in the middle and saying, you know what, the thing I was interested in when I started, something else is way more interesting. Um, so it's not for me that I think oh i did the thing i set out to it's more of um like i know what i'm capable of and i know my goals are just slightly higher than that all the time forever that's my my plan for my whole life <laughs> you know my goals will always be a little bit higher and that'll keep me working hard right and so I'd say it's either like I realize that where I am with painting, any I've I've accomplished the best painting I can make. Um, and um, you know, sometimes it's just like, okay, if I put another brush stroke, it will be less good than it is now. Um, and then um Sometimes it's just like joy, like, okay, that's, I'm really happy. <laughs> you know, this painting is making me happy. And, um, and, and again, it's like more brush strokes will detract instead of adding to it. And, um, and I, I really love a lot of abstraction. So, you know, that I think that maybe makes it more challenging in a way to when you're done because um you know it's not about like oh I rendered this in a way that's really believable you know that that feels like a way that a person could assess if they're done um I am conscious of where I have different kinds of brush strokes um and whether it feels like there's some balance like this area right here has a lot more canvas showing through. And if that was symmetrical, it might feel more done. But right now, like this part right here makes it feel a little bit like if I stopped right there, it would feel like I quit before it was ready. So there is a little bit of that, of like the finish quality of it. Um, so not a simple answer, right? But there's a, a certain finished quality of did I get paint in the places you would expect it to be, <laughs> you know, like if there's canvas showing through, is it intentional or is it because I ran out of time? Um, you know, if I have super thick paint right here, is that the only place because it's focal and it makes sense or does it look like again like i just ran out of time um and and so i i do some of that assessing um as i go along but i think that's usually assessing that i do before it's done you know of like explaining to myself why it doesn't feel done yet because there really is just something where the painting will say, like, I'm done now, <laughs> you know, and, and, um, yeah, and I really think that's mostly just about understanding my skill level of, um, you know, I, I really do feel like, um, yeah, I put everything I could into it, and, um, then, and then I'm I'm done, you know. Um, but I've never been prone to um, well, I don't know how to say this. I've, I've heard a lot of people say that they keep working it and working it. And um, like I'm just so conscious of my creative energy like if if i'm just doing mindless brush strokes 
like I don't let myself do that you know it's um because that's that for for me that never improves anything it's um um you know sometimes I'm I'm just intuitive but I try to always be conscious of of what I'm doing um so I don't needle things because I know for me like the these big abstract looking brush strokes um they won't happen without a lot of conscious thought um and I would, I would a, love to know yeah, I know you can't explain it I would love to know what those conscious thoughts are how you make that decision because as I'm watching this I'm seeing every Brooks brush stroke does have a meaning it has an impact and because I, I would be like uh, when I first saw Pat's question I would have been like uh 10 10 uh, I don't know 500 brush strokes ago I would have said it was done but it just keeps <laughs> right. getting better <laughs> well, thank you yeah and you know I mean I think the thing is I just uh uh gosh I can't remember who said this somebody said that painting is like um you know solving problems like you you start off and then you you solve some problems and you keep solving problems till they're done <laughs> you, know, you don't have problems anymore <laughs> and so you know i look around and it's like um the bird and the water they're all kind of joined up back here and to me that's fine but then the fact that it it wasn't like sitting on the water that was bothering me but this brush stroke, I feel like, is really confusing. Yeah. So I'm going to come back and kind of make that more subtle. I feel like it's almost done. This brush stroke, I'm going to change that. And then I think I think that is is it. Sometimes I'll sit on a painting for a couple of days and just say, this part isn't done. Like, what does it well, mean? That brings me to another question. I know an artist oh. who is a very well-known artist, uh, and he will work on a painting for months. Yeah. And uh, it, and he'll go back and find. And then he he told me that there are times when he will, even years later, take yeah. a painting and, and uh, not redo it, but I guess finish it. <laughs> Just, right. Uh, oh. Do you experience that? Oh, yeah. I've oh. definitely had paintings where, um, like, I get to a point <laughs> where either my passion is gone um, or my skill level isn't enough. Like, I'm trying to do something that's just so far outside my my normal thing. Like, when I started working big, you know, it's so different than working small. Oh. Um, or, you know, when I tried working with having several figures in a in a larger painting, um, you know, it was a super big challenge or, you know, there's different things or, you know, just concepts about color where it's like, <laughs> I, I, I've maxed out what I can currently do. And, you know, maybe if I come back later, I'll have, um, you know, I know I'll have the skill for it at some point. And then I actually have a, a stack of paintings that are just, um, you know, it's not done yet, but, and that's not about skill level. It's just about like, the painting has not yet told me what it needs. <laughs> and someday I'll come into the studio and I won't know what to do. And I'll look at the stack and one of them will just say, oh, you know, I need this one brush stroke and then it'll be all done. <laughs> or, you know, or a section or, you know, something. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I do. I have an entire stack of those. And, um, and, and it's, it's pretty funny, I think. Let's see. I feel like it's one brush stroke away. It's
feel like something right here is missing. I think that's uh, I think that's a wrap. See if I can do this without <laughs> dropping it. <laughs> I was worried about just dropping it on its face. So this is how it turned out. <laughs>